Welcome to episode 183 of Clarity Compressed. My name's Paul J. Daly, but today's guest is going to blow your mind. We're talking about Scott Flansburg, who is the human calculator. Beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. Okay, so I first came across Scott in a clubhouse room almost nine months ago, and ever since then, we've been trying to get it together. We did. We made it happen. Scott is the human calculator. At a very young age, he understood he had this gift with numbers. Not only the fact that they kind of all came together and made sense to him, but he's taken that talent and he has actually scaled it to share it with the rest of us to help other people get more comfortable, not just with math, but with looking at things from a different angle. So uh, in the interview, he's going to do some amazing things with numbers that are going to blow your mind. He made me a better mathematician right out of the gate. So I already have the ability to add a lot of two and three digit numbers together like that. I'm dead serious. Like I could not do that before this uh, podcast, but now I can. You're going to learn how to in just a minute. More importantly, I think just like any great innovator, anyone who is uh, committed to change and doing things better, Scott helps us to see things from a different angle and a different perspective. And, you know, from his documentary on the History Channel or his series on the History Channel to his education program for kids and also business people to the fact that he is actually putting Herkimer back on the map where they belong for inventing basketball. That's right. Herkimer literally invented basketball. He's going to talk about why. And he actually came up, Scott actually came up with a new calendar that's 13 months and it makes a whole lot of sense practically and from a business sense. So I know that's a lot packed into an intro, but I can't wait for you to see this interview with the one and only human calculator, Scott Flansberg. Scott, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your schedule to spend with me in the Clarity Compressed audience. I hope you're having an awesome day. How are you doing today on a, what is it? It's a Monday right now. It's the ninth, number nine. I love the number nine. It's my favorite number. That's right. So um, actually my daughter is nine. And you have a you have a thing for nine year olds uh, where you tell you say like hey this is a great season to get them you know engaged about math get them engaged and interested what is it why don't you share that with us it's the simplest pattern in numbers that exists and if everybody would learn this basic arithmetic would just be common sense for all of us so it's that simple I know it sounds crazy but as the human calculator. I see the world through the language of numbers and people think numbers are one through 10. We've all learned to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, but that's not how numbers work. Numbers are zero through nine. And so it's really 10 fingers, 10 digits, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's really zero through nine. That's how numbers work. So nine is the biggest number, the biggest digit. 10 is a number that has two digits and so on. The secret to numbers is every number higher than nine adds back down to nine. So adds back down. What does that mean? So if your kid wrote down the number 11, they'd write one, one. So all you do is write down the number. And the second step is to add up all the digits in that number. So one plus one is two. Got and that. then put that underneath and 11 minus two is nine. And that works for every number from 10 to infinity. So try 12, 1, 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 12 take away 3 is 9. So you pick a number and I'll do it for you. Two-digit number. 72. Oh, that's too easy. 72. It's 9. <laughs> it's okay, but okay. let's try it. It's still go. Yeah, yeah, 72. Yeah. 72, yep. 7 plus 2 is 9. But plug it in, yep. 72 take away 9 yep. is 63. And that answer is 63 adds up to nine. So I challenge of all your viewers right now to write down their age and now add those two digits together and write that total down underneath your age and then subtract. And your answer will be a two digit number that adds up to nine. Yeah, that's mine. 42 minus six, minus six, 36, three plus six equals nine. And if you get nine, Everything is fine. It means you did it right. And so this simple exercise, if taught to students that are nine years old, every number they see on the planet for that year will go back to their age, the number nine. So when you got your kids in the car and you're driving down the road and you got kids around nine years old and you see a speed limit sign that says 55, 
you've read that sign a million times. Oh, yeah. But now it comes alive because five plus five is 10. 55 take away 10 is 45. And four plus five is nine. That's amazing. So that fine. And if your kids can't do that, it's a simple diagnostic tool for parents and or teachers to help you fill in the gaps of what they missed in their basic arithmetic class because they usually just memorize stuff. So tell me about how did you first realize that you so you have a Guinness Book of World Records where you can count faster than a calculator can. Yeah. Right. And um, so basically, as I understand it, um, they got like a, a super fast typing accountant on one side and then they have you with just your your mega mind on the other side <laughs> and and they they spit out a number. Right. The judge will give you a number. And is it what kind of number? Is there rules behind what number he gives? They chose a two digit number. So random two digit number. The, the last one was 38. So I have to add 38 plus 38 plus 38 plus 38 plus out loud as fast as I can. Racing a 10 key account using that 10 key calculator going 38 plus 38 plus 38 plus 38 plus 38 plus. Right, 38 just plus. He's just doing that three, that three key cycle. Yeah. And she got 25 answers and I got 36. In 15 seconds. Yeah, I got 36 right, answers. Can we try that right now? Yeah, so clear your calculator. Right. Don't even tell me the number you're picking. Okay. I don't want to know yet. Make it tough, though. Two-digit, big, weird number. <laughs> and then hit the plus sign. All right. And then hit the same two-digit number again and hit equals. And now I'm going to start counting by that number. And you just hit equals each time I say the next answer, and it automatically adds itself. Okay. So you don't have to go through all those fingers. Do, 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 do. Actually, so, what I'm going to do is a screen record of this. Oh, good. Okay, and, yeah. And we're going to put this idea. right in. Thank all right. you. Yeah, this is going to be great. All right, so I got my screen record going. Okay, Everyone... now punch, punch in a two-digit number. Okay. And then hit plus, and then the same two-digit number again. Okay. And hit equals. Okay. And now I'm going to start counting by that number. You just hit equals each time I say the next answer. I'm ready when you are. Okay, so 48 is the number. So you got 96. Yep. Is the next one 144? 192, yep. 240, 288, 336, 384, 432, 480, 528, 576, 624, 672, 727, 68, 816, 864, 912, 960, 1000, 8056, 1104, 1150, 1200. I can just and I can go faster if you want. One two four eight one two nine six one three four four one three nine two one four four one four four eight. One, That's five, three, amazing. Six, <laughs> yeah. You know. And so, uh, but, so as that as that formulates in your mind, is that. Is that because you just remember them all, or does your mind just actually calculate that? Brilliant question, Paul. I no memory. I'm a I'm a calculator, and when I did this at Guinness, they said, "Hey, you beat the girl on the account on the calculator, so you're in the Guinness book." He goes, "But well, we got a problem. We think you're cheating. We think you've just memorized all these answers." And I said, right. "Well." I should still get in the Guinness book because that'd be amazing to be able to recall those <laughs> right. numbers that quickly. <laughs> right. Know? Start doing the math there. How many numbers do I have to remember? Right. And so, and so, uh, I said, well, you know, they said, can you prove to us that you're not memorizing it? And I'd never been challenged like that before. And mm. we came up with a way the calculator always starts at zero. So right. when you pick 48, I had to kind of start at zero and count by, so I could have memorized that. So I said, what if we started a totally random three digit number? And then I have to count by 48. There's no way I could have memorized oh, that. Oh, right. So clear your calculator. Oh, and punch in a, All uh, right, here we go. Screen record if you want. Yep, I'm going to do this again. All right. We're... And now you can tell me, let's pick a three-digit number that's our starting point. Okay. Punch it in. Yep. Say it. 532. Okay, and then hit plus. And yep. now what two-digit number do you want me to count by starting at 538? 48 again. Here we go. 580-628-676-7247728-2086-9169-64000-12060-1108-1156-1204-1252-1300. Like that. That's Same. amazing. Hold on. Let me make sure I save that. Right. That's a great way to prove it. Did you come up with a way to prove it? That was just in the moment when the producers were like, hey, man, we, we, that's a tough one. To, uh, yeah, they're like, nah, I don't know. Check your yeah, sleeves, and, uh, right? And then at the World Championships in Las Vegas in 2016, called Memory Ad, uh, uh, the another world record holder challenged me, and for my record, but she wanted to do a three-digit number. So the judge picked 247. So we had to add 247 plus 247, and 
uh, in 15 seconds, she had 24 answers and I had 26. So I beat her. I got lucky. That's as close as I ever got to get beat. <laughs> but when they did the math, the 26 answers of three digit numbers versus the 36 of a two digit number was the same exact number of digits that I said in that 15 seconds. The same you- exact amount of digits you got through. That's an amazing yeah. thing. So, Weird. you know, if people like as they dig into your ecosystem, they're going to see you with people like Larry King, Oprah Winfrey, Alice Cooper. You got Stan Lee, the Marvel legend, tell, talking about your mind as a superpower. Like the list just goes on from a kid from Herkimer who found out and realized that he could do something with numbers. You talk about math being something that people often avoid or it's kind of like in fashion to, to like say out loud like, hey, I'm terrible at math, but no one would ever raise their hand and say like, Hey, I'm illiterate. And everybody else was like me too. Right. So, (laughs) so you've kind of taken this skill, right. And everybody out there, everybody listening has something inside them that is uniquely them. They see it from their perspective and something like math or adding, uh, subtracting division, like arithmetic, you've taken that. And because of you just being willing to put that out there, you've been welcomed into all these circles. Right, where all of a sudden you're golfing with Alice Cooper and you're sitting next to Regis Feldman and, and you're doing all these things. Why do you think that your passion and your love for what you do translated into that over your career? Wow, great question. It, it, to yeah, me, I, I'm not just calling you up here to, ma- to do party tricks, right? Like this is yeah. like, let's talk about this because I need people to understand, right? Like what, what is behind that? Because you were brave enough to do something with something that is maybe out of fashion even and uh, you've, you've made it cool. And usually when someone shows you how to appreciate something, it actually helps more people lean into it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a miracle, first off, to answer your question. Uh, dream come true. Never even thunk of any of this to, to occur when I decided to get out of the Air Force and start a program to help kids with mental math. Um, and to turn it into such a, a business for 33 years now, a dream come true. And, you know, performing for the Obama children, the Clinton family, <laughs> the Bush family and royalty around the world and all that stuff. Like you said, uh, every day I wake up and I get invited to something. I'm just like, are you kidding me? There's no <laughs> way. What is up with that? I know. So, I know when my email came through, you were like, oh, I've made it right. <laughs> it's all downhill after this. <laughs> yeah. It's a, uh, it's, it's a dream come true to have a, a, gift and to figure out a way to use it for good. And so with the number stuff and the human calculator, that's been a dream come true. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm learning that I'm more than just a human calculator. Uh, you know, I, I try to be a good communicator, a networker. Um, I love efficiency. I've invented a new calendar. I've invented accounting B I've got all these Wait, different you've invented things. a calendar. Yeah, yeah, the calendar you guys use. (laughs) You just glossed over that one. Oh, you guys, you you mortals, the mortals using this 12-month calendar. All right, (laughs) tell me about the the, the perfect, the calendar perfected. Yeah, I was on Stanley's Superhumans, and and, and they had me do where I can calculate what day of the week any date is on to see what's going on in my brain. And uh, Wait, so any day in life history? And I'll tell you what day it was. All right. Um, your birthday, let's use your birthday or a kid's birthday or a wedding or something, you know, nobody could track. Okay. It down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give you uh, a wedding. I'll give you a wedding date. I'll give you my, my wife and I's anniversary. Is it, is it a Saturday? Were you, were you married on a Saturday? Um, yeah, no. So are you sure? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Here we go. Now we need to find <laughs> out. <laughs> okay. The, the date is May 31st, 2002. May 31st, 2002 was a Friday. It was. That's That's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. For a second there, I was like, wait, it wasn't as, what day was it? It was totally yeah, yeah. a Friday. That is accurate. May 31st, yeah. 2002 is a Friday. Right. So I can calculate any day of the week in history. Okay. So you're doing this on Stanley's show. I'm sorry. I pulled you off of that one. No, oh, that's okay. Yeah. And so, um, but after I get that algorithm wired in my brain and, you know, got it where I can do it so fast. The next natural question was, is why do we use a calendar that is so confusing that you have to have this incredible algorithm to figure out what day of the week a date is on? Fair. And we're getting ready to die from Y2K. <laughs> I remember um, that. Hunking and, in you know, our basements. We, right. And emergency so, food in our little wind up. Yeah. Radios. Yeah. And I was just like, well, how, why are we letting this calendar that was invented 2000 years ago by a bunch of people that thought the earth was flat? 
destroy us. And so it inspired me. I, I was visiting a school in Phoenix, Arizona on Cinco de Mayo, May, May, May 5th, 99. And a little girl asked me to do my Guinness World Record. And she asked me to count by the number 28. And I went 28, 56, 84, 112, 140, 168, 196, 224, 252, 280, 308, 336, 364. And I heard myself say 364. And I was like, wow, that's almost a year. So 13 times 28 is 364. Why aren't we using a calendar with 13 months and every month has 28 days, which is exactly four weeks. The first would always be a Monday. The fifth would always be a Friday. Every number of every date would always be the same day of the week. Every month, business quarters and cycles and halves and would all be the same number of days. Life what do you do with the so extra day? Deeper. Huh? What do you do with the extra day? There's your, that's. <laughs> Everybody joyful. says, wait a minute. That makes yeah. so much sense, but let me try to trip you up. Let me pull right. you and down. <laughs> meanwhile, you're using a calendar that has 28, 29, 30, right. 30 31. Like right. water, you know, you don't care. <laughs> now all of a sudden you're worried about my one, one day. day. That's <laughs> the best answer ever. Just like anything. No. Someone gets to the top of the podium, right? Let's, let's, let's throw a wrench in their plans, right? Yeah. Until you like point out the insanity that you're already right. living in. That's amazing. Well, and so it hit me that night. I was sitting at my house in Phoenix, and and I was like, okay, 13 times 20 is 364. How do I get to 365? What can I do? And it hit me like a thunderbolt to count zero. So the January 1st is the zero day, and then there's 13 months. Solved. But they're, but they're numbered zero through 12. There's So there's a zero month. A zero day and, and zero and month. There's a zero day. So it kicks off on zero, zero, and then it goes through the 1328. Well, when that bill hits the legislation, I will lobby with everything I have to make it Thank happen. You. <laughs> so just so you know, it's coming out. My calendar meets up with your calendar. They have to align. Mm -hmm. The next time is in the year 2023. We're close enough. We have time. January 1st, January 1st needs to be a Sunday. So all my one day or Mondays. So you can download my this calendar for 2023 for free at my website, thehumancalculator.com. And just all I'm, I'm asking you to print it out. And when you're working on 2022 and you start working on 2023, just start filling in all the stuff you can on it. And I promise you, so many patterns will erupt off the page at you for your financial patterns, your uh, um, recreational patterns, all these different things will jump off the page. That is amazing. And especially for our business-minded audience, um, I know there's going to be a bunch of like math geeks and just curious innovators that are going to be like, let's give this a shot. Well, and here's why we need to. The first six months of the year, January through June, only have 181 days. Mm -hmm. The second half of the year has 184. So there's three extra days in the second half of the year. So when you do financial analytics, mm -hmm. uh, that's that's. That's it's terrible. always a mess. And even when you think about pay periods and all this stuff, there's always all these asterisks in there. Well, all this and well, that. And if you're a retail business, it gets probably even more complicated. Right. So imagine if we all just use this calendar to schedule functionality, which, which would be finances, logistics, mm -hmm. things like that, that don't care mm -hmm. about, you know, Julius and July and Julius Caesar and August and Augustus Caesar. Right. And just once 365 days divided up in a way that's efficient, manageable. But here's the other thing. Now, when I say to you, hey, let's get together on the 5th, we both know it's a Friday. Easy. Right now, if I say to you, let's get together on the 5th, it could be any one of the It's like, Saturday. hold on, what day is this? Um, let me yeah. see. Yeah. Oh, so, man. And, and I got to tell you, you know, it paralyzed me at first because I'm like, like you just said, you know, when it gets up in front of the legislator, it, you know, who do you call? The Pope? You know, I mean, what, what do you do to, to, to get the calendar changed, right? Excuse me, Mr. Pope, could you please cancel the uh, calendar? It's right. really not that good. Right. So, uh, so, but what I figured out or learned is that there's 41 other calendars on the planet Earth. And so I'm just offering 42, number 42. So yep. you can choose to use the Muslim calendar, the Hebrew calendar, the Chinese calendar, on and on, or the human calendar, the calendar that makes sense to the human brain and the body. Is that what you call it, the human calendar? Yeah, because it so good. makes sense to your brain. It's so good. But more importantly, it makes sense to your body because our bodies are work off of a biorhythm, which is 28 days. Yep. Pregnancy cycles, lunar cycle, all these things. It's all based off 28 days. I, I don't I think I don't know what else to say. <laughs> that one right there just blew my mind. It, it, I live with this, Paul. How do you think I feel? Oh all right? man. So, you you feel you feel constrained is probably how you feel often. <laughs> I, I, I've been trained to just accept what is and change what you can. And so that really made a big difference. You know, 
Uh, I'm trying to change the way kids learn arithmetic to learn that nine pattern. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to change any curriculum. I call that chapter zero. Mm -hmm. If every kid would just learn chapter zero first, now everything goes back to nine. The rest of math would be a lot easier to understand because you're not based off memory. It's logical. Mm -hmm. And so same thing with a calendar. Why are we using a calendar that makes literally no sense? I mean, August is named after Augustus Caesar. September, sept is a Latin word, which means seven, sept. But September is our ninth month. Oct means eight, but October is our tenth, our tenth month. month. I mean, it's a mess. Yeah. It's just, why is it that way? Because it is. That's right. Each be no because it is, no right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Well, as we kind of round out here, I would love to talk about um, what it is that you're most excited about right now. So you have the a very, very broad spectrum of interest. People play, put you in the human calculator box, but you're doing so many things. Uh, what are you most excited about right now that, Pete, that you want people to know about? Thanks for asking. The, the National Counting Bee. It's like a spelling bee, but it's a counting bee. We did the Arizona Counting Bee. You can go on YouTube and watch it. It's incredibly exciting. It's a STEM-based event. It promotes uh, numeracy, uh, mathletes, and fastest human calculators. Mathletes, uh, and my great. other pro and that's going to, we're doing it in America first, and then we're going to do it internationally. Each country will have a counting bee, and then we'll have the international counting bee. And that'll be an annual event and hopefully a legacy for me when it comes to the human calculator to be, be doing that for the rest of my life. And then number two is my hometown of Herkimer, New York, turns out invented basketball. And turns didn't out. get credit for it. <laughs> turns out they invented basketball. <laughs> what? We had the first rim, the first net, the first backboard, the first game several months before. I think that qualifies game. as inventing it. It's, it's crazy. And the story has not been told. And I have a TV show on the History Channel. So when I read this book about my hometown and having such so much to do with basketball, I decided to do a documentary. And now it's turned into a $50 million project. We're revitalizing all the buildings that played a role in this historical moment uh, and building an event center to celebrate the teenage kid who came up with all these rules and invention uh, of basketball. So that's consuming my being when I'm not the human calculator. That's amazing. We're going to link all this stuff up at wherever there are links. We'll make sure that people can get to you. Um, a question just popped into my mind. What is typically the last thing you think about before you fall asleep? Well, that's the best part about falling asleep is you don't remember when you fell asleep. I, um, you know, I do a lot of different things. I count blessings because they always say count sheep and uh, that really doesn't do much for you. But if you count your blessings, you're reviewing in your mind the things that matter to most to you. So I, I do a prioritization thing is make sure I'm not missing out on people or friends that mean the most in my life. Cause you know, life gets busy. Sure does. Uh, so that's usually what I do is count blessings. If I'm, you know, not watching something while I fall asleep. That's amazing. Well, that's a great note to end on. Did you have something else to say? Well, I just wanted to point out cause you know, you, being an upstate New Yorker, uh, the basketball story about Herkimer and my nine pattern, how everything goes back to the number nine, 130 years ago, the first basketball team in Herkimer was called the Herkimer Nine because they used a baseball team and each team had nine players and that's what the, the way it started. So <clears throat> that's all I got. Come that's on. It. Sorry. <laughs> that's amazing. That is amazing. Um, on that note, um, thank you so much for giving us some of your time. I know you have so much going on. Thanks for inspiring us with your life and your your mission and your numbers and reminding us to count our blessings because in the end, everything we do in all this busyness, guess what? It comes back down to that. That's It's it's a simple exercise that just makes you better human. So yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks for seeing that, Paul. I can't wait to talk to you soon, Scott. Thank you. Cheers. I mean, come on. I was right, wasn't I? I think Scott probably exceeded your expectations for this episode, even when I set them pretty high in the beginning. I hope that you take what you saw today. I hope it, it helps you to see things differently. I hope you lean into the fact that you have a gift that the rest of us need. And most importantly, I love, what, I love Scott's answer when I asked him, what do you think about when you fall asleep? And he said, I count my blessings. So I hope you spend some time counting your blessings this week. Thank you for spending some time here with me. I count that as one of mine, and I'll see you next time. We came to fight.